tissues and histology. Now remember when you look at your levels of organization, what a tissue is is a group of cells plus its surrounding material that's called matrix working together. So it's basically a group of cells working together. And notice that when you look at the tissues of the body, every one of them will fall under one of four categories, epithelial, connective, muscle, or nervous. So we're going to see examples of all those in the following videos. And when it comes to histology, often a sample might be taken from someone. A box is where you have the removal of a tissue for some purpose. You're going to look at it closer to see if perhaps there's something's wrong with it. And most people will say that they've never had a biopsy done, if they've ever had a drop of blood drawn for any reason, or maybe some skin cells off the surface. Those are all biopsies. <clears throat> now, an autopsy, of course, very different. There's where you look at a dead body to determine what killed them. So we'll look at these different cells and tissues here and a whole lot more along with them. But before we get into the adult tissues, think about the embryonic tissues. Now, these don't look anything like the adult tissues we have today. These germ layers, as they're called, will be discussed with a little section on embryology much later. But look at the three different types of embryonic tissue, endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. Remember, endo's always inner, ecto's outer, and meso's generally the middle layer right in between them. So with this endoderm, that develops into the deeper structures of the body digestive tract. Think about the things inside the trunk of your body where you think of most all those organs as being. The meso or middle layer, muscle and bone are very big, blood vessels right along with them. And then the ectoderm be the very superficial things like the very outer layer of your skin and some other structures of the nervous system. But looking at these four tissue types, let's start with the epithelial tissue. Now these right here consist almost entirely of cells tightly packed together. And the reason being epithelial tissue is generally the tissue that covers, lines, and protects most structures. <clears throat> Look at the outer layer of your skin, the epidermis. Look at these passageways which open to the outside of the body. Look at many organs inside and out you often see epithelial tissue. When something covers and lines, it's usually this here. Sometimes connective will do it too. So you think about covering body surfaces, and then when you look at glands, endocrine glands that produce hormones, or exocrine glands in many places, almost entirely epithelial tissue. So the outer layer on the surface of your body where you skin, when you look at the body systems that open to the outside, digestive, respiratory, uh, urinary and reproductive, all of those systems which open to the outside, those passageways are always lined with epithelial tissue. The inner layer of your heart and also the very outer layer is epithelial tissue. Same with the inner layer of blood vessels. You want that to be a very smooth layer, that way the blood will flow as easily as possible. The linings of body cavities, you probably saw some of those in chapter one. Now notice they'll have three different surfaces. Now the basal surface is the attached surface. The free is generally unattached, and then the lateral, like anything lateral, is generally in between two others. So in between two other cells, you'll find a lateral surface. But something else you want to always think about with epithelial tissue is a basement membrane. Most all epithelial tissues have it, and as long as that layer is intact, those cells will regrow from it. Specialized cell contacts, proteins which bind these cells together are very important. Without all those proteins binding these cells, they would make a good barrier, and that's largely what this epithelial tissue is for. Epithelial tissue does not have blood vessels penetrating it. Because often it's so superficial, it would be easy to damage those blood vessels. So you won't see any arteries or veins going through epithelial tissue. And since this tissue is so exposed, it's often being damaged on a regular basis. So it's always undergoing mitosis. New cell layers are always coming up, pushing the old ones away. So back to that basement membrane. This is a layer, and they tell you it's acellular, so it doesn't have any cells in it. But think of it as like a sticky substance that holds these epithelial cells to something deep to it. Now, usually what that's going to be is a connective tissue. Connective tissues like to connect things, like an epithelial to something else. So you'll see this basement membrane layer just deep to the epithelial cells, not any of the other tissue types. As we said before, as long as this layer is intact, those cells will regrow. So it guides them when they do that after they've been damaged. They talk about this acting as a filter when you get to the nephrons, which are the functional units of the kidneys. You'll see that there are three different 
things which make up a filtration membrane in the kidneys, holding big things back in the blood and letting small things go into the nephrons. Simple mechanical filter, just like a coffee pot on a filter holds back big things, tiny things go through. And not all the epithelial tissues have a basement membrane, but most of them will. Looking at functions, protecting things, covering and lining is usually where you'll find them in many cases. Acting as barriers, not just keeping things out, but also keeping things in. Now, you do have to permit the passage of some substances, even though barriers are made. The nephrons in the kidneys were mentioned before, but you'll see when you get down into your lungs, there are these round, tiny, microscopic air sacs called alveoli. And you'll see the only thing that separates the air that you breathe in from the tissues deeper in your body is a very thin microscopic layer. Very, very thin layers will generally let things pass through them, or stratified thick ones won't. So there's some places the epithelial tissue makes barriers, but it still lets things pass. The pancreas, talk about secreting substances. Anywhere cells need to do a very large amount of absorption or secretion, you'll find epithelial cells, and microvilli will be found there too. We'll look at those further along. Absorbing. You look at the small intestine, there'll be these tall columnar cells with microvilli all over their surface. That gives you a lot of surface area, so you can do a whole lot of absorption, just like in other places you can secretion. And again, most all glands of the body are going to be epithelial tissues. Now look at some of these surface structures. They always have different sizes, numbers, and functions. Looking at the microvilli, those are the smallest. If you were to see these on the surface of a cell, there might be thousands of them on a cell, and they just look like a fuzzy border because they're so tiny. So they're definitely shorter in size than others, but they're more numerous, and they in increase surface area anywhere a cell needs to do a lot of absorption or a lot of secretion, either way. Cilia, these are found on cells. You might find them by the hundreds, and they're larger than the microvilli, and they're always used for moving something over the surface of a cell. Good example is where you look at your respiratory bronchi, which are all these air pipe passageways. As you draw air in, it'll stick to that damp mucus environment, and the cilia have got to move that stuff out of that region. Otherwise, you'd have lots of infections and inflammation and damage. And then a flagellum. The only place you'll see a flagell in humans is on a sperm cell. <clears throat> only one will be found on the cell, and it's used for propulsion. It's like an outboard motor on the back of that cell. But look at how you can name and classify almost all epithelial cells and tissues. Now, what you want to do with almost all epithelial tissues is take one of these first words, simple stratified or pseudostratified, and then take one of these second sets, squamous cuboidal columnar. Now notice these first three words describe the number of cell layers that you'll find, and the second three words describe the cell shape. And when you look at cell shape, you always go to the outermost superficial layer if there's more than one. So looking back at the number of layers, if you've got a simple epithelial layer, it's just one cell layer in thickness. That's it, just one. Stratified is always two or more, and pseudostratified is just one, but it looks like two. You'll see a picture of this further along. Pseudo means false, so falsely stratified is still one. And then you look at the shape of the cells. Squamous is flat, think like a pancake or a shingle on a rooftop. Cuboidal is simply cube shape. Often they look round in the histology pictures, but round isn't an option. Go with cube. And then there's the columnar, the tall and thin. So what you can do is take one of these first three words and put it together with another. Like simple squamous would be one flat layer. Simple cuboidal would be one cube-shaped layer. Stratified squamous is many flat layers. Stratified cuboidal, many cuboidal, and so on down the line. Take one of the first words, one of the, first, uh, one of the second set, and just put them together. Describes your number of layers and cell shapes. Now looking at functional characteristics, where you'll have simple layers, just one cell layer of epithelial cells, that's generally where you want things to move. Think about diffusion of gases in the lungs. You got to get oxygen into your blood. You got to get carbon dioxide out of it. If you just put one very thin layer of epithelial cells around that blood, that material will pass. And since those gases are lipid soluble, that helps. Filtration of blood in the kidneys. You see a very thin epithelial layer in the capillaries there. Secretion, absorption. You want to move a lot of stuff? You need simple layers. Now go to the stratified where there are many layers. 
the outer layer of your skin, the epidermis, probably about 50 cell layers in thickness in many places. Well, that's going to make a nice thick barrier where things don't pass like it did with the simple. So good for protection there. Squamous, very thin and flat. Often you have materials passing through them. And with cuboidal and columnar, you do long as they're simple. And you don't find the stratified cuboidal or columnar in many places. Glands is about the only place you might. Looking at cell surfaces, some of them are very smooth, like the epithelial cells that line the inside of your heart or blood vessels. You want that to be a smooth layer. That way the blood flows as easily as possible. That way it eases the workload on the heart. Microvilli, we mentioned again, any cell that's going to do a lot of absorbing or secreting is going to need a lot more surface area, and that's what they do. Cilia, again, move something over the surface of cells. That's usually mucus and material trapped in it. There's some other exceptions. And then transitional epithelial tissue is a type you find only in the urinary system. You'll see it's very handy in places like the urinary bladder where you actually need expansion. You need a change in cell layer number and shape to get expansion. So you'll see more of that in the urinary system. And look at this picture right here at 100 magnification and then same one over here at 400 notice you have some little tall columnar shaped cells and look at this little fuzzy looking border right here there you have a pseudo stratified ciliated layer so the cilia look kind of like a little fuzzy barrier there were microvilli be even thicker and more numerous but a good picture of cilia is shown there